Welcome to Beyond Number 8, where we explore agri-tech innovation in the 21st century. Kiwis are proud of their number eight wire mentality, their ability to innovate with the most basic materials. But in the 21st century, science and technology have provided tools we could have never imagined, opening up new horizons for primary sector innovation. So where is it headed? What opportunities are beckoning? And how can we make sure New Zealand Agritech is ready and able to take advantage of them? Well, here we explore how we can innovate beyond number eight. Hello, and welcome to Beyond Number Eight. I'm Peter Barraclough, the Chief Executive of Lincoln Agritech. And in this series, my colleagues and I will look at the challenges and opportunities facing New Zealand's agritech sector. Okay, so today we're looking at agritech innovation, how agritech innovation can solve issues of scarcity. Many of the inputs used in the food and fibre industry are becoming increasingly scarce. So how do we continue to continue to feed and clothe the world without depleting its finite resources? It's a question at the centre of much of agritech innovation and one that our scientists grapple with on a daily basis. So today I'm joined by Yuval Alvial, co-founder and CEO of Israeli company Autonomous Pivot and Professor Ian Woodhead, Lincoln Agritech's chief scientist, to discuss example of innovation to overcome water scarcity. Welcome Yuval. Hello, good to be here. Welcome Ian. Thank you, good to be here. Ian, perhaps we could start by talking about why water is becoming scarce. It's, it's happening, you know, all over the world. Is it a particular problem for agriculture? It is a particular problem for agriculture. There's, there is a lot of water around the world, but it's very poorly distributed. There's a lot, for example, in Antarctica and tied up in glaciers. There's a lot in some of the groundwater supplies, but it's poorly distributed and it's a very variable quality. So some is saline water that's unsuitable directly for agriculture. Um, some is contaminated with, for example, arsenic. So it is a significant issue. And now coming to you, Yuval, um, is, what's, the, what's the issue with water in the States? How big of, much of a problem is it? It's a huge problem, in, in, especially in the west of the United States. It's a very now now a uh, very recognized problem. Uh, the Colorado River is drying up. There are droughts from California all over to uh, Kansas, Nebraska in the Midwest. Um, you can see droughts that have been there for um, many years. Actually, they think to change the term, not, not call it a drought anymore because it's not something that is um, momentary. It's not going to, to change it is just um continuous growth maybe uh, so water uh, also there is an um, underground aquifer that is called ogolala just below of the midwest and it is drying up and there are uh, a lot of um, researches showing how it dries up and it's possibly drying up due to agriculture and over irrigation so there's a lot of issue about water in the Midwest and agriculture. Yeah, I'm sure there is. And so, you know, that's a finite resource, that aquifer. As I guess it's being continually drawn down. Is climate change making the whole situation worse? The climate change making the whole situation very variable. Uh, you could have uh, years with uh, a lot of um, rain that is not uniformly distributed, uh, like very rainy months and then very dry months. And, uh, and then you can have years that are just drought all over the year. So the variability is going up and it's hard to, uh, it's hard to manage, it's hard to manage uh, the crops with such a variability. And so Ian, look, you've been working with soil moisture for most of your career on one way or another. Um, what was one of the ideas that you came up with uh, in the last few years, uh, which Yuval has been involved in, in terms of how to, you know, measure and use that water more effectively? Yeah, well, just a tiny wee bit of background first. Yeah, I have been working for a long time with uh, soil moisture sensors, and most of those sensors have been, in, um, are, as, as is typical with uh, soil moisture sensors, is that they're buried in the ground, so that they 
are quite location specific, so you measure at one point. And the thing about soil moisture is it's very variable over even just a few metres within one paddock due to different topography and different water uptake rates, etc., um, by crops. Um, and even um, non-uniform irrigation. So, you know, we th we thought about this, and we thought about, you know, is there a is there a way of um, measuring that remotely so that you're not so much tied to a particular location? Can it could um, a soil moisture sensor be attached to a vehicle or a centre pivot irrigator? And and that was kind of the spark of an idea. And we uh, were very fortunate in getting some. Funding support from um, Ministry of Business, Innovation and Employment um, in New Zealand and that enabled us to investigate um, the possibility of using radar, a specific type of radar, to measure the soil moisture content and importantly to mount that on a centre pivot irrigator. So as the pivot rotated, uh, you could measure the soil moisture all around the paddock. Um, and, and that was a... Um, it was an idea that that came to fruition. We were we were able to prove that um, on pasture, and it and it worked really well. At a similar time, Yuval, you are uh, addressing the same problems and thinking about how to uh, overcome them. So, how how were you going to go about approaching this problem, and and how did you make the connection with us? So, very similar, actually, along the line of uh, what Ian just described. Uh, my co-founders they worked on. Uh, probe that is a uh, soil moisture sensor that is in the soil and also they realize that it is not enough it is uh, the soil moisture is very variable around the fields the field in the u.s are usually a huge um, 125 acres or uh, 50 acre, uh, hectares and so they are um, just measuring in one point is not enough it's even misleading to measure in one point. And there is a variability, like Ian said, due to the crop uptake, due to the uh, topography, also due to the, the soil texture itself changes around the, the field. And uh, we were looking for other solutions and then we uh, we found the Lincoln Agritech solution. And that was uh, the beginning of it. Yeah, and so then uh, you had some people come to New Zealand pre-pandemic. Pre and had some conversations, and, and how did all that go? Yeah, uh, so my co-founder, Yossi and Yair, uh, they went down to uh, Christchurch and Link and met with uh, Ian, and uh, uh, they had some experiments with the uh, ground-penetrating radar, and uh, we were able to take it and uh, adapt it to our case. Yeah, and that's and then you are able to trial it in the, the US and, and things look very promising. And then we had to commercialise it, right? So you are the guys at the front end of that, commercialising it. And, uh, you know, good science is, is always great to have, but uh, good science becomes great science once it's out in the field and being used and making a difference for farmers, isn't it? So, Ian, how did the process uh, go for you? Searching for... Um, companies to uh, consider this um, ground penetrating radar soil moisture sensor um, for irrigators within New Zealand and on pasture, which is where we we tested it. Um, and once Autonomous Pivot came along, um, uh, Yuval and others, uh, they said we would like to try it on corn. Now we had kind of considered corn, but but consider that actually very challenging to do. Um, and, but, you know, it was, it was very fortuitous for us because we hadn't uh, really had the uptake in New Zealand from the um, irrigation companies. Um, and so it was really a wonderful opportunity for us to, to link up with Autonomous Pivot, um, to work with them um, in getting it to work um, in corn and uh, it was it's it's been an excellent relationship really we really appreciate them coming on board um, and commercializing it in the way they have and then you well we had to um, put an agreement together uh, during the pandemic uh, never having met each other in person so that worked okay 
And so then, how's the technology going? You know, how's this? How much water are we saving uh, out there? And what's the farmer's response been? Yeah, so I'm, I'm very. Um, so first, yes, we never met in person. That's that's most most uh, unfortunate. Um, but I'm very proud to say that uh, four years ago we had one system, and now we have 400 systems spread all over uh, the U.S mainly in the Midwest, where they grow corn, soybeans, and potatoes. And um, we were able to show on a field-by-field -field experiment saving of about 20% of the irrigation. We were able to show on a many-field experiment, that is about 30, if I remember correctly, um, about 15% less irrigation. And 15% less irrigation, if you calculate that for a field of corn, it's about 300 swimming pools. Uh, so it's uh, 10 million gallons of water. And if you multiply 10 million gallons for 400, you get what you get, it's billions of gallons of water. It's really, in the beginning, we were measuring our savings in the, the swimming pools, but now I think we should turn to lakes. We're really um, <laughs> saving little lakes of water. It's uh, it's just amazing what you can do. Yeah, and so how are the farm? How have the farmers respond to those savings? You know, have they? Have you had anybody try the system and give it up, or are they uh, are they ordering more? You know, what's the response been to those water savings that they're seeing with no loss in yield? So the farmers uh, vary. Um, some of them are uh, very excited. What they really like is the fact that it is uh, non-invasive. It is a sensor that is not in one point, and they they really understand. They're the first to understand the power of it because they know the field and all the variability, and they know the troubles of uh, soil moisture probes. So the fact that we can move in the field, even in corn, and uh, measuring hundreds of points and not in one point is a great um, advantage. And uh, the fact that we can save water, unfortunately in the Midwest is not a big deal for them because they are not really paying for the water, but the fact that we can manage the field using that is, is uh, talking to them, it is a real advantage. Um, we enrich the system with other sensors, with um, rain bucket, with cameras, and uh, with now with a nutrient sensor. And so we, what we provide is a real management system for the field. Everything is, is on the app and it is connected back to the pivot and it's really going towards autonomous pivot that will grow the crop. And that, that's really a great value for the farmer. Uh, opportunity do you think there are is in the states you know how many pivots uh, are there in use and what are your plans for the rest of the world so in the middle it, sorry in the US there are about 200 more than 200 southern pivots and we are now on 400 of them so the opportunity is huge around the world there is 500 southern uh, irrigation pivots and this uh, this market is growing in more than 10 percent a year. And I think the opportunity is huge. Uh, also in Australia and New Zealand, uh, we have some systems. Uh, it's it's a way of irrigation that is um, it's it's a system. It, it's a, you know, a method of irrigation method that is growing very rapidly. And there is also an option not, not to put it on irrigation pivots. Actually, we can put the system on on anything that is moving in the fields, tractors, sprayers, robots, anything. And Ian, you know, lastly to you, you know, uh, how is it for you to um, have thought of this idea, worked it through within um, Lincoln Agritech and now seeing it being implemented in, in the USA via Israeli company? I mean, how does that all feel? It feels really exciting. I mean, one of, one of the things that, uh, that uh, researchers and scientists get is a, is a buzz from their science. But that's quite small compared with the buzz that you get uh, from seeing the science implemented and used and making a difference. And in, in this, this field, in, you know, amongst uh, irrigators and, and irrigation generally and water use and water savings, it's, it 
is making a significant difference. And that is really satisfying. It's really exciting. That's great. That's great to see too. And I think for me, uh, the great takeaway is it takes a team to do this. So it takes uh, an idea, conceptualization. It takes somebody on the other side of the world that's looking at the problem and going, I need a solution. Somehow you find each other. You work together uh, on refining that solution for a you know commercial outcome. You're implementing it in the field. You've got to raise capital. It takes a whole team, but you know we're making a difference together as a team, and I'm I'm really yeah. pleased of that of that relationship. It's nice to be able to teach the Israelis a little bit about managing water because they were the experts at it for a long, long time. Uh, so we've really enjoyed our relationship with the, with you, you, you Val. And um, Ian, thank you for coming along today. And um, we wish you, Yuval, and Autonomous Pivot every success in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me, Peter. Thanks for listening to Beyond Number 8, presented by Lincoln Agritech. To find out more about Lincoln Agritech, visit lincolnagritech.co.nz. Subscribe to our newsletter in the podcast description below or find us on LinkedIn, Twitter, YouTube or Facebook and keep up to date with our latest science and innovation. Until the next episode, when we'll continue exploring beyond number eight.